the show of hands, I just saw, I'd say that this is a very critical session, right? I mean, we can have the greatest curriculum in our colleges, but if we can't deliver it for whatever reason, then it's basically kind of uh, dead on the mind. And that's something we definitely want to avoid. Now, if you would please take out this handout, uh, it's two-sided, right? One side you would use for uh, the discussion later. But just look at the workforce background on the other side of the sheet. And these are just a sample of again, the workforce data points that have been sourced from a few of the recent uh, workforce <coughs> and energy efficiency types of reports. Um, the three that are here um, are one, um, the, um, the one that was completed by UC Davis Energy Efficiency Center and the California Community Colleges, attracting students to the skill AC, ACR trade, barriers and opportunities. And for those of you, especially you repeat attendees, you all know that um, HVAC consumes uh, a majority of a building's um, energy usage, right? I mean, or that's the largest component of that. Lighting often falls behind that, right? <clears throat> Blood loads are not insignificant, but because HVAC has such a um, uh, distinct kind of majority in that realm, um, it, it does get a lot of attention, all right? <clears throat> uh, the second um, report came from the HVACR Foundation. It was released fall of 2015, and um, they work with Burning Glass. Um, it's a, a national organization. They looked at um, the job listings that occurred across HVAC and related types of sectors, and they basically uh, collected that over a year's worth of time. And you know they found some encouraging results, encouraging in some and daunting in other ways. Right? Uh, I'd say that the encouraging part is that they see that there is a demand. Right? You can see there that. Um, they found over 220,000 job openings, right, in 2014 alone, and it was higher than what the BLS has shared, you know, through its kind of typical set of uh, um, occupation codes, right? <clears throat> and part of the difficulty that we're having, even just in terms of understanding the landscape on this, is because a lot of energy efficiency work is embedded in the number of different jobs, right? That there is no, or rarely do you find someone you can point to and say, okay, that's an energy efficiency specialist, right? They're doing things like weatherization, or some people are doing controls. Controls technology or controls technician doesn't even show up in the BLS. And there are some move to amend that so that way we capture data more accurately. And then the um, last report listed here, as I said, it was just um, yeah, at least accessible to me yesterday, Energy Efficiency Jobs in America. It was commissioned by uh, two groups, um, Energy for the Future, that's a nonprofit, and then Environmental Entrepreneurs, um, that's a, a private coalition of businesses that is trying to help with some public initiatives here, but uh, just look at some of these uh, data points right here, right? I mean, I, I was um, quite surprised as well. Um, 1.9 million people work full or part-time in energy efficiency related activities. And of that, 889,000 workers or, or, or jobs were at uh, you know, a majority of that person's time. Now, that's encouraging the city. Um, when they surveyed a number of businesses, they saw that um, many of them are expecting an increase in business, uh, upwards of 13% this year, right? And as they cited making energy efficiency the largest industry in the clean energy economy. <clears throat> um, and go figure that energy efficiency employs twice as many workers as the auto industry. Right, that really kind of came as a shocker 
right there. Albeit, you know, we do know that a lot of the, the auto industry is sourced overseas. And then uh, finally here, and I do want to point out that this report has um, uh, jobs data for all 50 states. All right, many of you ask, hey, is there some source of information where I can find something that applies to my own backyard? Well, now finally you have something here. Um, if you go through it state by state in alphabetical order, you'll see the top 10 counties and the uh, number of jobs associated with each of those counties per state. Right? And hopefully your counties are among those. Right? That again is really valuable information to take back to your administrators um, as you work with industry advisors, right? building up your local advisory boards. Right? That just helps reinforce the message we're trying to send out. Okay? Um, and then kind of circling back up to that first report, I think many of us are aware of, of the challenges, right? We've heard a lot about the wave of workers who will be retiring out of facilities management, <coughs> uh, building technicians, building operations, right? And yet, you know, we have, um, you know, we have a scarcity of people who will be following in their footsteps, right? So, so that's a double whammy. Right, and that's something uh, we really have to pay close attention to. <clears throat> but again, people, they don't know what they don't know. And um, if, if our um, high school students, that are graduates, if they don't know about these jobs, if they don't know about the good living wages that are possible, after they've accumulated enough experience, then there's no reason for them to feel compelled to go in this particular direction. Right? Um, there, of course, you know, we have a cultural stigma. We have a bias for, you know, four years perceived professional occupations, doctors, lawyers, attorneys, right? I mean, it's great, but, you know, we don't all need to be doctors, lawyers, and attorneys, right? And doctors, lawyers, and attorneys have buildings that they need to work in. Well, we can be part of that side of the equation, right? Um, and, and again, you know, the kind of general stigma that, well, you know, I mean, this is blue collar work, and boy, you know, it just doesn't seem glamorous. It seems like hard labor, right? And we need to communicate that these are genuine professions in and of themselves. Right? I mean, if our HVAC technicians, installers, our controls technicians, our lighting experts, what have you, right? They're on the front lines making sure that, A, the buildings work as they need to and that and on top of that that they can help deliver better operations and um, anyhow with that um, I just want to turn briefly to the partnership that a best center is pursuing uh, with a couple of nonprofits I'm going to focus mostly on ACE mentor for today's purposes just be aware that we are also uh, working with the United States from Building Council's Green Schools uh, Division, all right, and just be on the lookout for more information about that. Um, now, ACE Mentor um, is a nonprofit. It started in 1995, and I first became involved with them a few years ago. I had actually heard about it even earlier. Um, you know, I'm an architect, and someone suggested, hey, Larry, you know, why don't you get involved? You, you have a teaching background. You know, it seems kind of natural that you could serve as a mentor for these high school students. Mm -hmm. um, I started um, as a judge, just kind of, you know, getting my toes wet. Um, I started as a judge. I looked at the final team project, right? These students, they work in groups, <clears throat> basically over the course of uh, 16, 17 weeks, they meet uh, usually once a week for just a few hours, sometimes more, right? And I was very impressed at um, kind of the, the well-roundedness of the solutions that they show, right? They were introduced to SketchUp, right? That way they could gain some 3D modeling skills, and that is a free program, right, to virtually everyone. They also learn about um, kind of project scheduling. They learn about cost estimating for their projects. And at the end, 
uh, you know, they delivered a PowerPoint presentation, they got to hone their soft skills, you know, they dressed the part, right? And, um, you know, as a judge, I was very impressed. Uh, last year, I got involved um, as a, a, I would say, as a more kind of casual mentor, kind of substituting here and there as needed. Right, I got to work more directly with the high school students over a, you know, a few weeks here and there. And um, again, um, you know, what I noticed, right, and this is also confirmed by ACE Mentor's own um, surveys and metrics, right? they have often been able to deliver impact in urban schools serving underrepresented groups. And these students usually, by the time they complete this, they often cite ACE Mentor as one of the more significant things they've done right, to improve their skills and chances for success in college. Uh, therefore, you know, you know, there's a good chance then that if we could recruit these youngsters as future students, right? You know, not only do we enhance our enrollment numbers, but hopefully the quality of the student body that's coming in. And um, yeah, it, I think I already um, talked about the webinar, right? You saw the flyer. That's January 26th. That's 11 to 12 Pacific time. Um, HVAC Excellence, um, who many of you know from their conferences, they are going to be uh, co-hosting the webinar with us. Uh, they also have done some work in the high schools, though. I don't want to put words in their mouth, but um, it's been more at the level of assessing those who are actually going into um, HVAC or coming out of HVAC programs at the high school level. And I would really like to follow up with them to see which schools those are. And if any of you are regular attendees at HVAC Excellence, I think it would help to hear you all kind of reinforce that message when you go to their conference, you know, the next one's in Orlando in March, right? Um, I just want to uh, close out this piece on ACE Mentor uh, by showing you uh, their website, right? You can get some background <laughs> info on them, right? They work with uh, volunteers from the architecture, construction, construction management, and engineering community. And, and many of the people who coordinate these high school teams, they are volunteers. It's absolutely astounding what they've been able to do largely with volunteers. Right? Their paid staff are a series of regional directors. And we have the Western Regional Director here in Oakland. Uh, we're very fortunate. And, He's kind of helped us to build this partnership. Um, I will um, kind of just show you the map of affiliates. That way, for those of you who, you know, maybe after the webinar or what have you, you might then consider getting involved with ACE Mentor, right? Um, here at Laney College, we are going to be hosting the Oakland teams uh, starting January 25th. And yeah, it will be the first time that they've been here, and that way they'll be able to get direct exposure for what we have to offer. They'll come into contact with faculty from carpentry um, and HVAC and architecture. Okay, but as you can see here, though, we don't have anyone here from Las Vegas, right? Um, there is a chapter there, and if you don't see a chapter, be aware that you can also help to create new chapters. 